Kabul, a bomb has just exploded near the American embassy, killing 16 people. This attack on September the 8th, 2006, is the most violent in five years in the Afghan capital. The Taliban have claimed responsibility for the attack that bears Al-Qaeda's signature, a suicide car bombing. The capture of Osama bin Laden and the destruction of the Taliban regime is the armed coalition's mission in Afghanistan, the greatest international mobilization since World War II. The United States military has begun strikes against Al-Qaeda terrorist training camps and military installations of the Taliban regime. Side by side with the American GIs, over 10,000 elite soldiers of the coalition forces search for Al-Qaeda's commander night and day. But after five years, Osama bin Laden still eludes them. He's the leader of the most notorious terrorist group of all times, a group that brought America to its knees on 9-11. And the man is still at large, somewhere in the mountains between Afghanistan and Pakistan. Before 2001, bin Laden had all the time he needed to prepare his war in Afghanistan. Thousands of fighters came in and out of his training camps, because as early as 1996, he was put under the protection of the Taliban regime. Five years after the peacekeeping forces arrived, Al-Qaeda's fighters are still here, assisted by Taliban rebels. We've filmed these exclusive scenes in the province of Razni, less than two hours away from Kabul. We're among the few journalists to be allowed to interview a group of Taliban fighters since 2001. We are fighting the Americans because they took away our independence and they're occupying our country. We're also fighting the government because it's supporting the occupying forces. We don't have to do directly with Osama bin Laden. We get our orders from Mullah Omar by letter, by tape or other means. This camp has a few dozen trained fighters. They eat, sleep and live with their weapons. They are the Taliban, but also young fundamentalists recruited in the South Afghan tribes. Pakistani and Arab Islamists come here on a regular basis to train them. Camps like these develop very quickly in Afghanistan. In all, the Taliban have about 15 to 20,000 fighters at their disposal. Their objective, to take back control of the country. Their method, terrorism, surprise attacks against the West, led by small, standalone groups. Their weaponry, anti-tank rockets, Kalashnikovs, automatic guns. They move very fast on bikes. On this particular day, the Taliban are getting ready to attack a police station. They offer to let us come along, but we refuse. We do not want to be involved in a terrorist outrage. Attacks are multiplying in Afghanistan. The country has become one of the most dangerous places in the world. In this context of extreme violence, we've been trying to understand why Osama bin Laden, the most wanted man on the surface of the earth, is still at large. We're driving back to Kabul. We want to see the Americans. A few days after our arrival, Luke Knitting, NATO spokesman, is giving his weekly press conference in front of about 30 journalists of the international press. For more than 20 minutes, Major Knitting goes on about field successes of the Western armies against Taliban rebels. Stated operational requirement to 100 instead of 85 percent. Hard at the insurgent heartland of Kandahar. 
hundreds of men who we wish had instead chosen to fight for prosperity and progress in Punjabi and Kashmir no longer remain as a threat. NATO deployed 30,000 men to secure Afghanistan, but each day the country moves closer to anarchy. When we asked the major about bin Laden, his attitude quickly changes. Is the capture of uh, Osama bin Laden still a priority for uh, Croatia? I, I, I prominently wear this ISAF badge to uh, try to get across that I'm, I'm not a coalition soldier, I'm probably a, a NATO soldier, uh, and obviously come from the American Army. Uh, I'll let the, the coalition speak uh, for themselves. Their, their mission here uh, continues, and, and they, can, they can answer that question far better than I. So is there um, uh, again strong links between Taliban fighters in the south and uh, Al Qaeda? We're just not that interested in, in waiting. So. End of the press conference, we won't get any answers to our questions. You can only wonder if the foreign troops in Afghanistan really want to arrest the most dangerous terrorist in the world. Late afternoon in Kabul's Grand Bazaar. In spite of the growing number of terrorist attacks, the crowd are out shopping. Since the fall of the Taliban in 2001, the city has changed its appearance. We see more and more women in the streets. The markets once again have goods for sale. Billions of dollars have been invested by the international community to rebuild the country. Misery, however, can be found everywhere. Afghanistan remains one of the poorest countries in the world. More than 40% of the population are unemployed. Those who work have to survive on $40 a month, when in fact it takes $200 to support a family. In this context of misery and violence, many Afghans wonder why the Americans still haven't arrested those responsible for this situation. To them, bin Laden and his troops are getting help from Pakistan's secret service. It's obvious that Pakistan is protecting bin Laden, as it has always done. This is why he's over there now. He doesn't have any other place to go anyway. Pakistanis have protected him since the beginning and they allow him to go all the way to Afghanistan. Pakistan, officially an ally of the Americans, is accused of playing both sides. They're secretly helping the Islamists, America's enemies. Furthermore, it was our Pakistani contacts who made it possible for us to meet and film the Taliban near Kabul. Pakistan, protector of bin Laden's troops. This idea is largely held by certain Afghan officials. We have a meeting with one of Ahmed Karzai's close advisors. He agrees to meet us on condition that we don't show his face. For four years, this man attended meetings with the Americans dedicated to the capture of Osama bin Laden. And he goes even further. According to him, the Bush administration itself doesn't want to capture the leader of Al-Qaeda. There are friendly relationships that go back a long way. You know, the Americans are the ones who supported him and made him very famous. Does American Secret Service have relations with people who are close to Ben Laden? When American helicopters give weapons to the Afghan forces, these same helicopters are giving the same things to the Taliban. That shows that there are very secret ties between the Taliban fighters and the Americans, one way or another. Are the Taliban fighters still linked to Al-Qaeda? Yes, of course. There is a very strong coordination between the Taliban, Al-Qaeda and the Pakistani secret services, of course. An unbelievable statement that would explain the growing anger of the Afghans who are turning against the West. To see for ourselves, we decided to meet the French troops who've taken command of the Kabul region. 1,200 soldiers based in a strongly protected camp. They run the risk of being attacked by the Taliban at any moment. 
Just outside the town, about 10 French military personnel are assisting the Afghan police in its mission of securing the area. In our area, we have very good contact with the population and the authorities, police, Afghan National Army, which does not prevent bomb attacks from time to time, especially in the cities. We are used to patrolling on foot in the cities, which many other nations don't do. The French were the first ones to do it, and we are one of the rare nations to still do it on the Afghan territory. The official word from the French army remains diplomatic, but in Kabul, not everybody is as reserved. In these troubled times, people are starting to talk. We have a meeting with the director of the World Bank, Jean Mazurel. He had once been one of the top diplomats in the Afghan government in managing Western aid in Afghanistan. A few days before retiring, this high official no longer has any illusions as to the real reasons for the American military presence in Afghanistan. The reason why the American forces are here is more because Afghanistan has become a sort of geopolitical aircraft carrier stuck between fragile and vulnerable Pakistan and Iran, representing the threat we all know, and maintaining this army 10 minutes away from Islamabad and Tehran is more important than fighting Taliban. I was invited to the American Embassy, I was with the Deputy uh, Ambassador. The Afghanistan Minister of Foreign Affairs complained that the American government did not put enough pressure on the Pakistani government to secure the border which is extremely porous, thus allowing the Taliban to shuttle back and forth between Pakistan and Afghanistan. The American official responded, Pakistan and its president are vulnerable and we will do nothing to increase Pakistan's vulnerability. I understood that when it came to choosing between Pakistan's or Afghanistan's stability, Americans would not hesitate, not for one second. But everybody suspects as much, given the threat Pakistan would represent if it became an Islamic country. If the Americans don't want stability in Afghanistan, why send elite soldiers to capture al-Qaeda's leader? Officially, the French special forces have this mission. Their headquarters is in Jalalabad. That's where we must go to continue our report. We want to understand how bin Laden made it out of Tora Bora and...